Hey guys, this is Justin with Zounds, and thanks for tuning in to our next episode of Zounds Live. Uh, what we got today is the uh, new Boss Space Echo RE202, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, that was just the uh, stock first setting there, but we're going to do a deep dive today on the stream and kind of explore what this thing can do. But uh, I was very excited to uh, get my hands on this because this is the uh, new and improved uh, pedal version of the old Space Echo. So um, I have the chat pulled up behind me as well. So uh, per usual, if you guys have any requests, if you have any questions about the pedal, feel free to drop a line in there. I can see it here pulled up. So I'd be happy to help you guys. So what is the Space Echo? Some of you guys out there might not know what the Space Echo itself is, but it is a uh, tape unit, a tape delay and reverb. And this is the new kind of pedal version of that, supposed to be replicating the old um, RE201, so hence the boss nomenclature here of the RE202. So RE201 was made in the uh, 1970s, 1974, I believe, was when that first official Space Echo unit uh, was made by Roland. And it was actually kind of a, a big box uh, unit with an actual uh, tape mechanism in the top, kind of like a large version of a cassette, if you can uh, picture it that way. So uh, it was a tape unit. So it actually recorded and cycled a um, continuous loop of tape there. So it would just record and then re-record over itself as the tape passed through the uh, uh, reel there. And that's how you would get your uh, delay sounds. It was an actual sample on quarter inch tape. So. This is emulating that in the digital realm there, and it does a hell of a job. Uh, it even has um, a switch here so you can change the perceived age of the tape from a like crisp sounding new tape to like a degraded, darker, old, like kind of grimy sounding tape. So you can kind of cover your pristine delays all the way to your really kind of age sounding stuff. So, so that's a little bit of the history of the actual boss unit. Giant tape unit, um, if you're one of the lucky ones out there uh, that actually has an old unit and it's um, functioning right now, then it's like the holy grail of sounds there. And this is for everybody out there who doesn't want to maybe maintain an old 1970s unit. Um, so this pedal is very, very easy to use though, but it has the same kind of layout as the old 201. So let's talk about this pedal. So first off, Love the form factor of it, and I love the look of it. It's kind of the uh, kind of a vintagey boss design. It's one of my favorite boss designs so far. So um, this is uh, kind of how that front panel looked on the old 201, uh, right down to the rotary switch with the 11 modes like it had as well. So it's kind of a cool throwback. Um, but let's look at this control face here. So I'm going to turn over here. So we got uh, our kind of a general effects section over here on the right, and this is where I'm gonna be manipulating uh, most of the stream, but this is the delay portion down here at the bottom, and then it has a reverb uh, on the top, and the reverb is independently um, operable, which is awesome. You could just basically just kill this knob over here, turn it down, and now you're just using the reverb, which sounds awesome, so um, loved that you can um, independently operate them, of course. But delay knobs, reverb knobs, that's pretty much it. Um, now, when you move over here to the mode selector, this is going to choose one of the various modes with the four kind of tape head combinations that you can do. And we'll explore that further in a little bit, but this is essentially getting you do different rhythmic options and different types of delays and tones when you combine different combinations of these four uh, tape heads. So it's really awesome. Uh, absolutely love kind of the kind of unpredictableness of it, which was honestly like a hallmark of the space echo. Like a lot of times people would be like, I have no idea what sounds we're gonna get. Let's just twist some knobs and see what kind of craziness this thing can do. And that's kind of the best part about it. 
this thing captures that very, very well with the mode selector switch. So you, you could just flip it to a new setting and the rhythmic kind of stuff based on what speed you're at are kind of crazy. So it's fun to kind of manipulate it. Anyways, moving along over to this section, this is our kind of input. And uh, I like to think about it as a kind of like a manipulation of the tone section of the pedal over here on the left. So that's where I mentioned that tape switch earlier, where you can change the age from an old sounding tape to a new sounding tape. It's this button right here. You can see the LED switching when you um, uh, press it. Then these two knobs, this is where a lot of the fun happens on the pedal. Got the saturation knob and the wow and the flutter knob. Also, I see in the chat, he says, Zounds is the best. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks, Sweetwater. Shout out to Alberto. Thank you all, friends. You are a fantastic business. I wish that we were Sweetwater, but we are Zounds. But thank you for tuning in. So um, uh, this, these knobs right here, uh, this saturation knob is kind of supposed to emulate the uh, tape saturation sound effect. So it's basically a preamp distortion. So you can actually distort the uh, decayed delay notes right here from this saturation knob. And it also compresses it heavily. So you can kind of um, change the feel of the pedal a lot with the saturation knob. Turn it up, it's more compressed. It's a lot more distorted. And we will hear that later. And then wow and flutter. You might be like, you know, what the heck is that knob? But wow and flutter is supposed to be a knob that captures the degradation that happens when there's uh, tape problems. So essentially when you have an old vinyl or you have an old tape unit, there's always those irregularities that happen in it. Like for instance, when you have a warped vinyl and as it passes around the stylus and the needle, every single time you'll get a slight warp and pitch if it's not even, this is capturing that. The old space echoes used to have problems when the tape would degrade and not go at the right speed. And if the tape speeds up or slows down, it warps the pitch up or down. So you get this really cool uh, warping effect with that. And when you crank the knob, you actually kind of can get like a, almost like a vibrato type effect where it's, it's really, it's really a, a great, but it, it can go extreme. It can go subtle, but it's just supposed to capture the effect of wow and flutter. Those are just terms for tape changes in speeds that get different pitches. So now that you guys kind of saw what's going on there, let's focus back on um, these switches here, or I'm sorry, these knobs. The top one is the reverb. And again, the reverb volume over here on the top right, of course, it just is the wet dry blend of how much reverb or how much little reverb you want in there. And then a uh, tone control is great so it's bass and treble you can just affect only the uh affected signal not the dry signal so uh if you're kind of noticing that it's getting muddy you can pull the bass out kind of like i did here uh, or if you want some more clarity you can crank the treble get brighter delay so yeah, you got a little bit of flexibility now getting down here uh we have our um our delay section and uh over here at the bottom when we get to the um uh this this knob right here, this is just going to affect our speed of the delay. So uh, as you go to the left, it's slower. And then as you go to the right, it's faster delays. Um, and then in the center, this is the intensity knob. Uh, that's just a feedback control. If you guys are used to using analog uh, delays, that's just a feedback. So it's the amount of repeats that the pedal will do. Turn it up, you get more repeats. Turn it down, it just kind of has a single repeat or a slapback. So this is also, if you want that self oscillation, crank that and then the pedal will self oscillate and I'll ex experiment that uh, later. Um, uh, oh, thanks, uh, good vibes, yes, uh, thanks so much. Um, then on the right over here, we have uh, our uh, delay volume. So again, it's just the wet dry blend of the delay. So how much delay is in your signal versus the dry signal or the regular one? So. Uh, much to cover. I know I've already probably spent 10 minutes talking about how cool uh, all the, the controls on this, but let's get to the very bottom part here. Your on off switch, accessing your different memory bank slots, and then your tap tempo. If obviously, you can uh, has a tap tempo to adjust the speed of the delay. You can just tap that and uh, fine tune it if you want. What you'll notice down here at the bottom, there's these sub menus on it. If you hold the this button, you'll get what's called the warp mode, which kind of um, uh, the way they des uh, boss describes it is it's like a dreamlike reverb where it kind of amps up the intensity of the reverb so it's just swimming in it. So if you want like a temporary effect for that, you hold this switch down while you're playing and it activates that uh, that mode. Then when you go to this mode, this switch right here, if you hold it, it turns the reverb on and off. So you can actually just disengage the reverb from the circuit and just get the delay. 
But where's the fun in that? I mean, I'm going to be using reverb and delay probably both concurrently. Uh, but you can turn off the reverb here. You hold the switch. And then lastly, we have this one. This is a very fun mode that everybody should, should really exploit if you have this pedal. This is the twist mode. So if you hold the tap tempo button, you get the twist mode. And that's what auto puts it into self-oscillation without you having to manually turn the intensity knob up. So you get auto self-oscillation for, again, kind of momentary effects. Like if you're in a set and you're playing and you just want like the last chord of a song to oscillate, you can just hold this down and it'll automatically start self-oscillating on its own. Which it's really, it's really pretty handy. So now that you guys kind of heard me uh, blab about the uh, uh, effects on there, play some Rammstein with it. Sure, sure, I will. I will in a little bit later. Uh, but uh, let's get to some uh, uh, tones here, and then I promise I'll do some Rammstein later there. So, so let's hear what this pedal can do. I'm going to put the uh, all the control EQ controls at noon, and we're going to put the reverb probably a little bit lower than that. And then let's just uh, let's just hear how this thing sounds. Uh, this is the first setting on the mode selector switch. Um, and then before I get there, actually, let me talk about the rig we've got here. Uh, I've got this um, American, uh, I forget what model this is, I think it's American Elite uh, Telecaster right here. And we are playing in the amp room there, we're playing a Fender 57 Custom Deluxe that's mic'd up with a Shure SM57 microphone. And then we have a Vox AC30 112 version, and that's mic'd up with a Sennheiser E906 microphone. So uh, that is our rig. Oh, actually, you know what? Um, Yes, we are running those in stereo there, so that is correct. It's the E906 microphone on the uh, uh, AC30. Uh, so, so let's uh, let's hear it. It's pretty gorgeous, uh, just right out of the right out of the gate. <laughs> So just really great tails on this. You can shut down the reverb if you have a better one. The reverb are not the best sounding, but I love the delay. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, I was just mentioning that earlier. You can disengage it from this middle switch right here. So yeah, if you you don't have a lot of control over the reverb, it's kind of like a you get what you get kind of thing. Um, so yeah, if you have other reverbs that you like to pair with this, of course, yeah, you can disengage it here. And just to show you guys, I'll actually do that right now. You see that LED removed from the pedal once the reverb is off so So I'm kind of washing it in a delay right there, but it just sounds so great. It's just that classic space echo sound, just dirty and gritty, uh, just kind of just, it's just got a bunch of character. So I'm pretty new to this stuff. Will this pedal be good for bass? Uh, I would say probably not to be completely honest, just cause um, a lot of times bass, since it's just such a low frequency, you don't want to saturate it with reverbs and delays since putting that kind of effect on it might just get a bunch of muddiness. You can use it with this though, but I would say you'd have to really experiment with your tone controls on your amp and on the pedal just to get it to sound clear. So I can't say you shouldn't use it, but it's just not common practice to use bass with these types of effects. Um, but go nuts if you feel like it. Uh, that's just my take on it. So, um, so let's go back to the uh, uh, pedal here. I'm gonna go switch to a new mode. Uh, that was the first mode. Let's just go over to the second and we'll see how this kind of changes with um, the different mode selection. So as you notice, the LED switches from the first uh, tape head to the second. So let's hear the difference here. So here's the first one. So you can notice that's that's got like a super long decay there. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. Now let's go to the second mode then. So you can see how it's a whole hell of a lot different there. So with a setting like this, I really like to do like actual classic, like, you know, delay uh, effects with, you know, um, Kind 
kind of do your kind of like uh, ping pong stuff. Works good for vocals and keys. Yes, yes. Uh, thanks for mentioning that. It does have a uh, line input switch over here, um, and that switches it from the guitar mode to the uh, line level mode there, which is great for yeah, plugging in keys. You can go stereo with it like we are, which is awesome. So now this uh, this works perfect for that. And then yeah, even vocals too. So yeah, good uh, good call. Oh, that sounds amazing. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, really fun effect, right? So that's it without reverb. Let's put the reverb in and I'll just, again, mix it pretty low and we'll hear how that same effect sounds with the uh, reverb, right? So... So uh, here's it with the reverb turned up too, so you can kind of hear it kind of swimming in that zone. So. love it so love the fact that you can just easily just kind of wash things out with this thing so classic space echo so let's go to the next mode um again this this thing has just such rhythmic variance with this mode selector switch that that was my favorite part about it just kind of flip the knob and then just like i have no idea what what it will do if i change these heads to different combinations so the unpredictability was my favorite part so let's check it out here is first mode again <laughs> Here's the second mode, and then here's that third mode. This sounds like something from Mazzy Star, yeah, for sure. Uh, so again, th this is kind of like this is kind of like the other tone uh, from Mode Two, but it just it takes on different textures when you switch the tape head, even if the rhythms don't change too much, which is fun. You just get different different tone characters from the tape, so. Let's mess around with the, um, uh, sounds like Alt-J, yeah, yeah, for sure. So here. This is also, it's just like an old tape unit as well. When you when you actually adjust the speed, it takes uh, quite a while for it to catch up with what the new speed is, just like on a tape unit when you're slowing down a deck there when the uh, tape's getting altered. So. I was having a fun time at home messing around with that for actual like tone effects, like doing that. Like so I was having fun messing around with that. With the intensity knob, you can do cool things with this. So, um. gives me those god is an astronaut vibes yeah <laughs> for sure love all these vibes you guys are throwing up please keep that up while we're doing this this is very fun for me so you just get that like really uh pun intended spacey tone i mean it's just it's just you just get so 
weird with it so easily. So let's go move the intensity knob up and guess what happens? Start self oscillating even when there's no input source. Check it out. You can just turn the intensity knob up and it's already going to start. So. So I loved doing combinations of the self oscillation with playing, which is kind of hard to get away with sometimes, but check it out. You can, if you're really touchy with it and sensitive with it, you can self oscillate and then play over the oscillation in a really cool way. So check it out. So it was really fun. I got I played that for way too long when I was at home the other day. It was like ten straight minutes of me doing that. So it was it was very fun. So so anyways, that's the intensity knob. But let's let's go to the saturation knob. I've not touched the saturation knob very much. My favorite spot was at about nine o'clock though. Just a teensy bit in there. Give it some hair. But let's mess around with the saturation knob. So here's it off. And then here's it at about nine o'clock or three or so, like I was saying before. See, it gives it a little bit of degrading, uh, degraded sound, a little bit of uh, distortion, preamp distortion, you know. And then here's it at about noon. And then three o'clock, pretty high now. Now you can hear the tails are the tails and are specifically getting a lot more dirty. So, and then here's it all the way up. I loved this messing with the tone controls. You could pull the bass back. Check it out. If you suck the bass out of the tone on the tail, then you can start getting some cool effects with chords. Awesome. And then here's the same thing with uh, without the saturation on. Um. Still really awesome, but then all the way back up again. It's like another gain stage for your amp. Love it. So uh, it's it's just a nice little gimmick to have there. So let's go to the wow knob. Again, I was being conservative with the wow and the flutter, that tape degradation I told you guys about. But let's pull it out and then let's hear it um, with just the wow and the flutter off. So here's it. <laughs> and then let me put my bass control back in. I sucked it out earlier, but... All right, now let's increase the wow so you can hear that warble there. Subtle enough, just gives it a little bit of texture. Let's go to noon. There we go, now you're starting to hear some pitch changes there. It's just enough to make it kind of within the normal realm of analog pedals though, because usually the an analog delay will have a little bit of warbling like that. But it's, it's still so usable. And then check it out, now we're at like nine o'clock or Sorry, three o'clock here, so. Now you're hearing it kind of fade, and then let's go all the way up, so. There we go. 
Now uh, you want to really hear it? Let's uh, have me sustain notes instead of just stabbing. Let's sustain notes so you guys can hear this. Um. <laughs> Almost like a chorus effect. Oh, so freaking sweet. All right, uh, let's, let's turn it all the way up here. So. Cool. And then the intensity, let's put more repeats in there and then it gets really weird. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So much to show in this pedal. So collective soul vibes. Yeah, absolutely. I actually kind of realized that while I was playing it. It's like, there was my like poor man's collective soul version right there. Thanks Maya though. Zounds' own Maya in the chat over here. So, so, uh, let's go to, uh, the next mode here. We're only, we've only gone through three of the 11. So just to kind of show you guys how much fun I had with this pedal, there's a million more things you can do. So let's go to mode four, different combination of tape heads now. <laughs> And that is a very cool one. That's super degraded. Um, let's go to the old tape sound on this one, the aged tape sound. There you go. You, can, you guys can kind of hear a little bit of the difference there. So. That one's kind of fun with the wow uh, on there too. Just shimmery, it's like a chorus. Very cool. Too much fun, too much fun. All right, let's go to the next mode. I am, I'm almost like rushing here. I gotta get through so much good stuff with this. This is great. There you go, now we're starting to get some cool ones. Okay, notice what happens on this mode. You see how the LEDs are now not on one or four or one or three in the middle rows. It's now two and three of these four slots. Now you start getting some weird rhythms with that. Check it out. Yeah, that's, that's where all the fun stuff happens, like in this this uh, this unpredictable territory I was telling you guys about before. There we go. Awesome. Very, very cool. Uh, and then let's slow that one down because since it does that weird rhythm, let's see where it goes when we have a slower pulse on it. So you notice it's like a, it's like an initial rhythm. And then once it kicks in, then the tail kind of just is evened out. But that's why it's so fun. It's like you, you just get such great, um, just rhythms with this thing. So um, there you go. Notice that tail, that's the flutter there. The um, flutter is pretty high, so that's why it's getting that warble on the tail. So check it out. Ugh. 
so cool. I could do that all freaking day. I can do it all day. All right, so let's go to the next mode here. So, so here we go. Now we got tape head one and three. So again, the rhythms are just too fun in this. So, and then let's saturate it a little more. I'm gonna do a little octave thing here, um, and then I'll put the reverb in a little bit later. But for now, here, check this out. So. cranked up so just love how weird that gets uh and then you can if you dial it back again the wow you can still have those like really subtle warbles in there that aren't so like in your face like it just was there so And then here's the saturation turned up, so you can hear those dis more distorted repeats. A few more modes here and by few i mean many because there's like six more modes <laughs> definitely good pedal for space like tons absolutely um it's like it's like the uh, um the introvert's dream right now just sit, sit in your room right now and spend like five hours messing around with this go to space everybody uh okay here's the next mode here once again check out where it's at the tape button here uh it's one two and three now so now we have three tape heads engaged this is the first time it's done that, so check out what happens with this. So now we're getting some cool stuff. Let me turn the saturation down so we get a little better picture of what it's doing. Now it's almost less focusing on the rhythm. Uh, there's a lot more interplay between the three uh, sections there. So now you notice the tone tone change a lot. It gets a lot more degraded and like chewy sounding. So. cool so check it out yeah let's let's move the intensity down i'll get more slapbacks on so yeah it's got a lot of range in the there we go so now there's a not not a lot of repeats down here at the bottom part of the dial just kind of cuts out really abruptly you can use that to great effect for like really cool things here so let's change the speed a little bit So yeah, I thought that was kind of fun. There, I was kind of, I was trying to do rhythm, rhythmic stuff at home when I was doing that. You know, like a.
that may have been my most favorite tone right now. Just five <laughs> cool that sounded. You guys are watching me in real time nerd out and all these ideas I'm coming up with. So this is what this thing's great for. Just like just creative exploration there. It's really great. Um, okay, now we got another mode here. Let's go to it. Let's see what it sounds like. So now we got tape head one and four. So that's another weird combination. So again, this one was, was cool because it's like, it's kind of hard to pin where the rhythm's at. So if you kind of do like a, like a, a regular rhythm, so, oh, uh, oh, we got a bunch of stuff in the chat here. Um, Rammstein sound, please. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, it's going to be a Rammstein in space kind. Yes. Yes, it will be. <laughs> Um, I gotta remember some Rammstein riffs to throw in here. They're gonna be clean though; they won't be distorted. But I'll I'll, I'll get you, both of you guys happy there. Uh, and then one more uh, comment here in the chat: great pedal for every type of delay. It's a great for slapback delay. Almost have that almost on all the time. Mode one, repeat, twelve o'clock, very low intensity, echo, approximately ten o'clock. Yeah, right. It's the the slapback. Like I was just playing a second ago. It's just it's just so tight, but kind of old, degraded sounding. So it's like the best of both worlds. Uh, digital format with that analog tone so glad you're having so much fun with it like i am there it's it's, it's so great so check this out i'm gonna do uh, this mode with i believe it's mode eight i want to say so let's go change the volume we'll go we'll go really slow <laughs> there we go Sorry. So rather than do a rhythmic thing when it's this slow, what I like to do a lot of times is just do chords because you don't get as much pulsing there. So, so check it out. There's there's where it's at right now. Let's put some reverb in. Oops, I just changed the memory bank actually. Hold on, let me go back to um, eight and then I'm gonna uh, turn this back on. Okay, there we go. So if you do, if you kind of sometimes play a delay or you just disregard the rhythm that it's giving you, you can do cool little ambient stuff like this, you know, maybe like uh, something like this. Cool textures that way without having to like play all the rhythms there so really like it and if you kind of swamp out the the wet dry blend here you get some cool stuff so maybe do a couple of volume swells you know Too fun. too fun. I think think that's my desert island pedal board. If I get stuck with only one pedal, I'm just gonna pick some some sort of spacey analog delay like this. Uh, so let's keep going, guys. Got so much to cover. So let's go to the other modes. We got tape head uh, three and four engaged now. Check this out. Ah, there we go. That's cool. <laughs> cool. So here, let's let's go fast with this one. So you hear it catching up to where the speed's at, it's kind of fun. So right away, you guys notice how the saturation and the distortion is a lot higher on this mode. I haven't changed any of the saturation knob, but you're, you can already notice a big difference. So it's really cool. There's just a lot of good effects. So cool. 
Cool, cool. All right. Um, let's see what what is mode uh, nine gonna give us. Let's see. All right, we got one, three, and four. So ah, that one's kind of cool too. A little bit, a little bit easier to work with. Um, tone there. So um, let's see. guys get the idea let's go to uh mode what are we at 11 oh i think i said 11 modes before there's there's in fact 12 so so now we're now we're on 11 so this is tape head one two and four so oh i just love it i do so much with this so let's crank the wow Fun. That's the sustain up, the wow up. All right, guys, let's go to the last one. I know I'm kind of hurrying through, but I've already get, kept you guys here for 45 minutes. Hello, Thunder Falcon. Nice to see you again here. All right, so we are on the 12th mode. So this is, uh, guess what? All four tape heads. So love it. It's so cool. All right, let me turn the saturation down. And let's push the intensity all the way up. All right, cool. Now I'm on like the edge of self oscillation. Love this. I'm going to push it there later, but kind of you'll hear that gurgling because it's just the pedal's adjusted, but to overload itself. So. I've said that like 15 times during this stream because every single time I mess around with this, I find some fun new cork I can mess with on it. So um, that's kind of a, a loose walkthrough. But as I promised before, somebody wanted some Rammstein, so I'm going to hack my way through uh, Duhast here uh, without maybe a, a no reverb just to spare you guys. But let's see if we can <laughs> do, a, do a reverbed out version of Rammstein right now to, uh, to, uh, uh, for our loyal fans over here who are tuning in. Let's do like, a, yeah, let's do a weird downbeat version of it. Let's do like, um.
that was actually really fun. <laughs> okay, cool. So sounds great. Uh, and, um, uh, I think I pretty much covered everything except, uh, the two switch modes. So really fast here, guys, I got through all the tones for the main switch. Let's go to these switch modes. Um, yeah, yeah, good. I'm glad everybody's happy in the, in the chat there. That was actually much cooler than I was intending it to be. Loyal fans are happy. Good, good guys. All right, cool. So let's go to, um, this switch where we have a warp mode. And like I said, it kind of makes like a dreamy reverb. So let's just hear it. I'll hold the switch. It kind of goes crazy. So check it out. So it kind of just ramps up the intensity of that reverb. So check it out here. I'll, uh, I'll switch this, um, let's reverb back on. Check it out. And uh, basically, like, if I was playing in real time and actually hitting notes while I was holding that switch, you'll get a much more exaggerated uh, effect. So just to uh, wrap everything up, um, I see actually I got a special request from the team here to also do some self-oscillation over here. But um, that's what I'm going to end on. We're going to self-oscillate this beast here with this twist mode. This is this final switch mode here, secondary mode. If you hold the tap tempo switch, it kind of self-oscillates. So let's let's hear that. So cool. So you can do really cool stuff with that. Again, while you're playing, if you change the notes, it just kind of goes wild too. But um, but yeah, check it out. So So what better way to end the stream than that? So it's very, very awesome. Um, guys, thanks for tuning in for almost an hour with me here to check out this new pedal. This is the Boss RE202 Space Echo. It is phenomenal. Um, was excited to get my hands on it and could not be happier with how awesome it sounds. Um, as a person who's never used an old actual tape 201, um, I can't really um, say enough good things about how just great it sounds and how good of a tape emulation i feel like it does so absolutely check this out on our website uh, we posted the link uh, just a little bit ago in the chat so you guys can check it out there please pick one of these up it is great it's a great reverb it's a great delay um, independently operated it's flexible has a saturation on here for even kind of an overdrive type tone as well so it is uh, a standout uh, lately for all the um, delays I've been demoing. It's a standout. So cannot recommend this thing enough. And I hope you guys have liked all the tones we got here today. Um, Thunder Falcon says, pedal seems awesome. Yes, it definitely is. Check it out, man. You said you were looking for a pedal today. Uh, check out that link we just posted. Uh, you can get one of those over on our website here. So again, guys, this is Justin with Zounds. Thanks so much for tuning in for the Boss Space Echo. And I will see you guys uh, on our next Zounds live stream. Take care. Thank you.